Anyway, this is six foot long. I haven't completely disassembled it because uh, I didn't want to go through the hassle of undoing everything. Uh, I'm not to the point where I'm about to fly yet, but at least it it'll it shows how the frame is built. So a crossbar member is about 12 inches long, and again it's an uh, inch and a quarter tubing. It's an eighth of an inch eighth of an inch thick. So the outer diameter would be inch and a quarter if you're looking for that. This is just this thin aluminum. You could buy that anywhere at Lowe's. You wouldn't have to order it. Um, and it's about you know, about inch wide, about quarter inch. No, it's not a quarter inch. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. And what I've done is bent that around and used it as a bracket. Here I put a bolt into the frame and then a bolt in that cross member. You could probably put a secondary bolt there to keep that from moving around, but it's not all that important. Here I've placed this in. This is, I uh, think, I can't remember how thick this is, but this is just to hold the line that's going to run up to keep the ass end of the the power harness from dipping down. This is actually going to go up to the carabiner. Now, of course, you wouldn't use this type of line. I'm just using it. I'm probably going to switch this out to Spectrum line when I get ready to fly, and that'll be another video. Once I get the engine and gas tank and all that stuff, I'll place this on and show it how it's flown. But this goes out to the carabiner, and you can clip in. And you wouldn't want to use a carabiner like this. You'd want your standard carabiner that you would clip in with that you can thread up and close off so you don't have to worry about it coming open. But this is just what I had lying around so I can show how the frame was built. So you wouldn't want to use this line and you would spectrum line that you use to tow with would be really good, be strong enough. And um, all I've done is tied it out here and made it so it won't switch around and then this clips into the gar carabiner. I'll show you some other videos on how to tie this into the harness. This portion of it here are these little clips with quarter inch, quarter inch bolts going in. This can clip in to the side of your harness, of a standard harness. That's the reason I did that. This is what I used to clip into the harness. These were like four bucks at Home Depot. And they got 300 pound load limit. You're not going to have much of a load on them. It's just to hold it to the sides of your harness. You'll see that in the video how I've clipped it in. I'm going to try several different ways to clip it in and get it close to other powered harnesses that I've used before I fly it. And then once I do that, I'll explain it on the, the video that I actually fly this harness with. I've made this harness a little longer. This is six foot long tubing here. And the reason I made it longer is so that it would extend well past, past the keel. Um, I've got another glider that I can't fly one of my other harnesses on because I can't shorten the kill enough. And so that's the reason I made this a little longer. So if you're watching this and it, it looks extremely long to you, that's that's the reason behind it to extend out. Plus I'd have more room to put the gas tank back there and try to center it out so I can center the gas tank to the point where it won't push me too far forward in the harness. So once I get all the weights where they need to be, I'll explain that in another video. So this is six foot, this is a foot tubing, you could probably go with this uh, square tubing here I use for a motor mount instead, that would be better to, to bolt it on, but I had some round tubing left so I used it here, so I'd use that for the motor mount. And again, I just took these inch, they're inch wide, they're about an eighth of an inch thick, and I bent it around to make a bracket. You can find those at any hardware store that sells aluminum. These are legs here. This was square inch tubing, and it was about inch and a quarter square inch tubing. And then I just cut the bottom of it off to make the bracket for the leg, put a quarter inch bolt through it to hold that leg on there. So that way it could move back and forth. And these are quarter inch bolts here. I used quarter inch bolts for most of it except for the engine mounts and then I used 3 8 bolt for the engine mount. So, And I used lock nuts on all of this. You want to make sure you use lock nuts, 
because you don't want this to the vibration to shake them loose. Now, when I assemble this, you're going to see that I don't have lock nuts. I didn't have enough of them in the shop. Um, I'll when I get ready to fly, I'll eventually replace these all with lock nuts. Everything will be lock nuts, and I'll probably drill a hole in the top of the bolt and put a pin in it, so I don't have to worry about it shaking loose even with the lock nut. You don't want this thing falling apart on you. So the legs, I believe they're 38, 38 and a half. That's actually, yeah, 38 and a half. And then I'm going to put these little coasters in. I'm going to use some brazing rods and put a nut on the inside, an aluminum nut, and braze it or weld it in there to hold these little coasters on. So right now I've just got them stuck in, so if you watch the video and they fall out, it's just because I've just got them wedged in there. But eventually what I'm going to do is take a 3 8 inch nut, aluminum nut, place it in there, and then weld it in place, and then thread these coasters in there. This these will hold 175 pounds each, so they should be strong enough to hold the load. The brackets up here again, they're an inch and a quarter. It was an inch and a quarter square inch tubing where I cut off the bottom portion of it. And then I cut them about three and a half inches long. And so these are going to be the leg supports that will go in right here and you'll see it when I assemble it. So those are the legs. This inch wide, and it's about an eighth of an inch thick aluminum, will hold the legs in place. I'm going to make these as trainers so that some of my buddies that haven't flown powered harnesses yet can learn to fly without messing anything up. So if they tear it up, it's not a big deal. So they won't be pulling in the legs back into place. They're going to fly with the legs down. I don't want them to even have to mess with that. Okay, this was one of the tougher pieces to make here. I don't have a TIG welder so it doesn't really support any weight and they used to use brazing rods to hold bicycle frames together so that's what I did this is angle iron so it is look at how thick it is it was a quarter inch thick angle iron originally I think it was four by three piece that I bought check and see yeah four by three but you notice I've cut this piece off and I used what was left over, this is the other portion that I cut off here, as a bracket to hold in this prop piece. So this is the prop shaft. So there's a shaft to run in there. The only reason you need this is so that nothing comes in and wraps up around your prop shaft. You don't get anything tangled in it. So it kind of protects the prop shaft from having anything get tangled in it. And this bottom piece is where the engine is going to mount to. So it's four inches tall and it's about inch and a half on the bottom so I cut it off to an inch and a half 